Robert Scoble, you've done a just we just had a great keynote from you, but Thank it's you. one where you say a lot of audiences are often pretty freaked by it. Yeah. How about today? Were people more or less freaked in a data center crowd? <laughs> The, the data center audience was less, and I think because they're much more sophisticated, they build the data centers that are actually uh, supporting these new workloads, and they understand just how much data is being studied and how much data will be studied about us, our factories, our sporting stadiums, our stores, our farms, right? Uh, uh, John Deere is putting sensors in farms uh, and on tractors that are going to study the earth in new ways, right? So. Um, they understand what's coming, and I think they're a little bit more sophisticated than the average person. Obviously, you know, somebody who buys a, a data center for a big a retail chain is going to be uh, more sophisticated than the average uh, customer who walks in off the street. Yeah, they're nerds. They want VR glasses, and they're sophisticated enough to understand the trade-off between surveillance and privacy. Yeah, but also it's a job for life. Yeah, well. There's going to be increasing demand on, on building more data centers, right? Because uh, our glasses are going to map the world in three dimensions and want to lay things on top of that. Uh, lines to next meeting, to information about the world, which means we need more Internet of Things, we need more uh, data about our world, and that all means more data centers. And then we need more entertainment, right? Which means more data centers. So uh, I don't see any stoppage of the demand on companies to build more IT infrastructure. It's not just more though, isn't it? Because it's going to be different demands, yeah. different kinds of data center infrastructure. It's true. If, if you study the new workloads that are coming with self-driving cars or robots or uh, these new glasses that will come out in two or three years, the, and, and the Google Tango phones that are coming this year that map out the world, those require NVIDIA cards in the data center, not Intel chips, right? And so people who built data centers for Intel are still needed, and I still think there'll be more demand on them too. But there's this new workload that we're seeing, uh, a vision learning systems, machine learning, that's being done in, in, in NVIDIA cards. And so your data center right there has changed, from architectures, right? And then the... Um, memory uh, infrastructure in the data center is radically changing and the scale is radically changing, right? I, if you're at Uber and you're planning on um, self-driving cars in 10 years, you're already starting to think about how do we build the data centers to collect that kind of data to ha have cars understand where potholes are and where and people, right? That's a lot of data, and it's a new workload, and it needs a new uh, architecture. And I, so I think these people have jobs for a long time. <laughs> and as well as more data centers, they're distributed differently because a lot of this data is uh, it needs a quick response time, and it's distributed to tiny from tiny sensors. And that might mean some centralization in the industry. So there. There might be uh, some disruptions that happen and acquisitions and stuff like that because Google has fiber all the way around the world and they can get a pack. They bragged to me that they can get a packet from Seattle to India faster than the phone company can, right? And another executive at Google said in five years, we're not going to use Verizon or T-Mobile or Sprint. We're going to use something else. And I said, Google, of course, because you're putting... Um, uh, stuff over our head or antennas in our cities hooked up to this fiber infrastructure and that's going to change what we come to expect because we're going to get these magic leap glasses and they're going to be connected right anywhere in the world and they're going to be connected at a high speed so that we can get a lot of interesting fun graphics and videos right to our eyeglasses right and that's going to change corporate expectations and so other companies are going to have to uh, uh, compete with that. You already seen Facebook dealing, putting planes over cities, right? With very high speed uh, wireless infrastructure on the plane and a plane that stays up for five, six weeks at a time, right? Maybe even longer, maybe three, four, five, six months. Um, so you're seeing Facebook reacting and I was in line with an Apple employee at, at, when I bought my Tesla and he said, oh, wait until you see our CDN. So Apple's reacting, right? So you see Three big companies going at it 
and trying to deliver packets around the world faster in a new way uh, and cheaper, right? So that is a disruption for this industry that if you're at Amazon, you better uh, think about that and think about how to compete too because you want to build glasses that are going to compete with this world. So it's fun. It's a lot of fun watching this industry uh, uh, deal with its new competition. And when you mentioned the shake-up in hardware, um, does the NVIDIA segment kind of eventually grow so big that it dwarfs the Intel segment, that kind of processing? It could. Every, every, almost every self-driving car that I've seen uses NVIDIA in the, in the trunk and in the cloud. Um, every VR, well, Sony doesn't, but Oculus and HTC use NVIDIA in your PC. You have to buy a really nice NVIDIA card in your PC. And all of these new workloads uh, from uh, self-driving cars to Google Tango phones to glasses to robots, they all require clouds that have NVIDIA workloads. So I see a good future for NVIDIA until somebody comes along and disrupts them and comes out with a cheaper system that does more. But right now, NVIDIA is on a tear, you know? Because, you know, IBM reckons the power processor could also find another niche in things like um, intelligence, AI. Yes, uh, that is true. And it'll be interesting to see, what, you know, does power, uh, power PC find a niche, but I don't see it competing with NVIDIA. I, every time I talk to somebody who's building a new workload, they're saying, oh, we're building NVIDIA um, uh, equipment. Yeah, so. Yeah, so we see a lot of that too. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. It's a, a real pleasure being here. It's a, a dramatically important company that covers this data center space, yeah. and we really appreciate it. So thank yeah. you.